tarde. Avui farem Hello, la sessió que ha d'abordar el tema de l'intel·ligència col·lectiva, que no és res més que bàsicament la intel·ligència feta per la ciutadania. S'entén per ciència ciutadana, la recerca científica que comporta la implicació activa del públic no especialitzat, o sigui, les persones. Qualsevol centre educatiu, educatiu, any educational bueno, center, centre, well, que in reality, any uh, center, maybe your kitchen, has several uh, resources, tools that can contribute to make science progress. Citizen science in the educational context can reinforce collect people learning based on good practices and experiences. Through citizen science, we look for students and stakeholders to be interested in research and share methods, data and results to offer responses to uh, some real responses to the uh, community. I'm just underlying this idea because to offer uh, responses to the scientific questions such as the non-citizen uh, science. So, the uh, practical perspective in the education you know, centers, schools, uh, will make possible to children to reach uh, the situation of uh, an active and engaged uh, citizenship. Therefore, children, they can be able to transform uh, science and the tools uh, for them to be self-criticism, to have new experiences, and also to offer uh, services to the community. How can we help children and young people to understand the environment and the role that they play in a community? How can we be together to face global challenges while they are able to create new knowledge and to put them into practice. How can we encourage to be open-minded cooperation and working in networks through student challenges that will have a positive impact in society? All these questions, all these issues are the main topics that we'll be uh, dealing with today, together with Luis Carlos Pardo, which is a researcher and she, his is able to convey his passion towards science through a STEAM project. He's been involved in FISIBAO, which is my uh, pronunciation, where students, they experience uh, physical things through the amusement park installations of TVDAO. These kind of projects encourage students to uh, mix uh, many other things in a crazy manner. He's able to mix a physical uh, chemistry, dance, music, always under the STEAM perspective. He's working at the uh, Forum Park and in the Olympic Stadium. We are also with Guillem Camperdon. He's a designer working with interactivity and with the Internet of Things, right? The Internet of Things, as you will know, and he also teaches uh, digital manufacturing. He's got a broad knowledge to produce uh, things and stuff through the education uh, system together with the makers to develop this kind of project. Projects. So today he's working in the Architecture Institute of uh, uh, Catalonia and in the Barcelona Fab Lab. He's worked with uh, Cisco and FESC and many other corporations to develop these projects. He is a collaborator. My name I'm aware about it because he's working in my university. He's working to make a mapping of different microbioma environments in the city and also he is able to make a cartography of noise in the city. We are also together with Janusz Kobar Vicente. He, she is a biologist, but she also works in museum management, how to manage a cultural heritage in this new society. She's got the ability to develop several activities in a culture projects. From 2018, she's the responsible of a citizen participation for digital projects such as personal lab and the Office for Sciences in Barcelona. Well, I can offer them the floor for them to let us know what are their projects. I don't know, maybe we'll break the ice with Carlos. Why not? Brilliant. Cool. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Well, 
I can see we are kind of tired of watching ourselves through a screen and uh, we hope that we will be in person any day as soon as possible. Let me talk about how to use the cell phone to produce high level experiments. With your cell phone, you can make different experiments. 10 years ago, it was very difficult to produce and you could only do it in a lab with uh, sensors and that are absolutely standardized today, such as the accelerometer. I'm going to talk about the accelerometer, but we can see other sensors that were very difficult to find and to work with them before. And it was much more difficult to data exporting, data adapting, you needed a software to adapt to data. And now you can send everything through WhatsApp. This is what I really want to share with you. Can you see my presentation? Cool. Okay. Fantastic. So what I'm going to share with you, it is this pocket lab. To me, a pocket lab is a cell phone. I was very interested in the previous presentations. Why? Because they talked about the use of uh, cell phones to abandon your own reality and to reach a new uh, reality. You can go back in history and to visit a website that talks about Greece 3000 years ago. And I'm going to talk about something completely different. I'm going to talk about what we will be able to produce with a cell phone. Why do I have a hammer here? Well, I have a hammer because we have to destroy the previous uh, perspective that we had through cell phones. We can make things very differently through a cell phone. What can we do th thanks to a cell phone? Okay, we can go to the different amusement uh, parks, students, they are bored the whole day. Oh, that's so boring to go to the amusement park, Tibidabo, you know, but they are able to see, to witness, and instead of a fighting to get in the second roller coaster, they talk about physics and they talk and they say, no, this is a sinus. No, this is a cosinus. No, can you see the degrees? We have people about 15, 17 years old who talk about the sinus or the cosinus. So me as a scientist, I'm so delighted to see them chatting about science, right? And you can feel it in this amazing amusement park. And you can make different experiments uh, with a high level of quality and loads of them. Well, this is something that we usually do once a year. What happens if you cannot do it more times? Well, we can go to the park and we have a small experience in a park in the city of Algeciras, right, in southern Spain, and it was fun too. You don't have to go uh, to an amusement park. Cell phones are also useful for you to get out of the classroom. Now we share different spaces. The way we teach in a different space has a different impact in the way of learning, right? So, well, I have a new school and we have the traditional structure of a classroom. We have the blackboard, we have the tables of the students, the chairs, right? If you are able to make something different in a school, in a courtyard, well, it's much, uh, much more fun. And what happens, right? What happened if we suffered a pandemic such in last March, what did we do? We reinvented everything. This is where I live. This is the same room where I am right now. This is uh, home lockdown time, okay, and measuring the power of my shouts and screams depending on the distance, right? You can find all the information at visions.upc.edu. We, you will find two examples, the one that we had in the Olympic Stadium, and also we have another example, which is a STEAM uh, class, the STEAM in the classroom, right? And you will find loads of experience. I don't know, maybe nine or 10, eight, nine. I don't know, I don't remember. You can follow them and you can put everything into practice at home, right? 
They are very, very low cost experiences. You don't have to buy almost anything at all. And you can do it in an elevator. You can do it in a lift. So it's an amazing thing. Well, the speed of an elevator, this, it's not never a constant speed. This was a, a training for teachers. You can see all the teachers measuring the acceleration and speed of the elevator. So at the end of the day, it's loads of fun. So we invite you to use the cell phone. What can we do with the cell phone? I just divided everything in three items. Uh, so I talked before everything, we talk about inspiration. So we want to know what happens when I do like this with my cell phone. What happens with the acceleration? You can measure, you can analyze, you can make a different research projects with a very high quality level. So, and maybe you can use it maybe at the end of the learning procedure for them to capture the main ideas, or you can do it also at the beginning because it's loads of fun for them to understand it. Newton's law are great to teach it through a cell phone. What else? Listen, I don't know if you realize, but uh, now we add this A from art. Instead of STEM, we say STEM. So this is STEM, right? It's like uh, mixing art with STEM, but I think that it goes beyond that. When you are making a STEM project, you can make creativity, you can create through STEM. You have these two sense, these two directions, right? That retrofit each other. So I tell you, you make a test. I teach you, you make a test. I teach you, you make a test. So this is a traditional procedure. I'm sure that you talked about it in the past. So this is the maker movement. How can I calculate everything? How can I make a test and to experience? Now I'd like to offer you, right, the three main pillars of any kind of experiment. I am a scientist, right? I write papers, I'm a researcher. This is what I do on a daily basis. What happens when you are a scientist? What happens is that a science beyond the uh, scientific methodology that he talks about the five steps, it seems that the most important step to progress in science, it is to wonder, hey, what a weird result. It's when you wonder about the result. It's not an hypothesis. It's when you say to yourself, what will happen if in case of this, I made that and right? So this is great. So this is the most important step in science, but we have these three main steps to prepare, to measure and to analyze, to prepare, to measure and to analyze. Students, they love the second step the first a little bit less and the third one they don't like it at all why because when we teach science many many times what do we say what's the image that a student has and that we are able to convey we can see newton under an apple tree the apple fold okay three laws of newton the first one everybody when it fails and the second one and this never works never works. This man developed the three main principles because it was a pandemic time. They suffered cholera and he was close at home. You need time to be a scientist. It's very hard, but it's very interesting. You need to experience, otherwise science will never exist. And this is what really lags in a classroom. We need time. So. I can have some experience with a synchrotron. You get an idea, you write the article and the paper, and it takes like uh, three years. That's quite a lot, three years at the least. That's too much. And students, they say, hey, five, no. Is that reasonable? The error, the statistics, did we get all the same results? This is what made us to be critical. People, they say, hey, as uh, people usually say, as the authorities are saying this, I'm going to say the opposite. No, no, at all. If they tell you that there is a quite a uh, risk if you 
take you take your vaccine okay well you should better take and to drive it is much more probable for you to suffer a car accident so data it's like a mystery no one knows so you cannot manipulate them and sometimes yeah they know how to do it some politicians they know how to manipulate data so what do we do i don't know what time I don't know what time is it anyway. So these are the main applications that we use. We use the uh, distances, we use the video art, we use sensors and uh, many others, uh, such as the sensors, mainly through the cell phone. So we have loads such as the Vieira, the Fivus, so these are three main apps that we use. And as we mentioned before, sometimes that they, they are not stable enough, right? But you have here uh, Arduino, Vieira, and Firefox, but they never, uh, for more than five years, it didn't change at all. So what can we do? We can measure, we can assess, and we can analyze everything. We can analyze everything. Okay, so what do we do? We, we put a sensor and then we pick one of the sensors, we record data and then we can use it, right? And beyond that in the menu, we can support the measurement. Uh, so at the end of the day, if you measured something, you can share data with your colleagues. So this is very important because what can you do? You can work and you can work with data, statistics and figures. It's very important. What's the average? What's the deviation? What's the error? And this is very important. And you can take a classroom, an acceleration. You can take all the data. They can share the data and you can have a collective experience. This is how we can create collective science and citizen science. We can work all together. So we can go to, uh, we can work to physics, we can work towards chemistry, and you can go uh, to have different data, data on a critical element. So maybe the most example example is this one, the most interesting one. So we can uh, have these sensors and I cannot talk it or usually, well, I can press it. I usually work with the phone, but it's quite a silly thing. So you take it and the students, they have so fun, right? And the most important thing is that once we made this experiment, we have this kind of data, but you can see in just milliseconds what happened. We can measure how long does it take this movement. This is the acceleration you can take and you can accelerate that will determine the acceleration of beating, right? And once you have this, the assessment that you can get it's very important and very simple because you can assess the acceleration, right? So this is a statistic of the acceleration. Acceleration relying on the length of the arm. So you can see graphics and everything, uh, how to better see the positioning and you can start from a specific uh, point of view, you can, from the physics, you can calculate strength, the average, the length of the arm, and also you can have this double calculation depending on the time. So this, uh, you can calculate the integral part. What is uh, 500 uh, meters squared times? The What is the acceleration of the so use spacecraft. So 
we can do it everybody and it, we can also complicate things and you have this double integral calculation so you can have different steps so the student that made this punch on the table they can calculate but maybe uh, i will be one of these students that would love to make this double integral calculation maybe we have two of these kind of students every three years but these guys will be the students that will be a develop so be careful with the freaky people all right they don't like to play soccer but please take care of them right what else can we do we usually we can take a ball and we can make this ball to bounce again and you can take your sensor and what did we get uh, something amazing right i was so delighted you're in lockdown because you can find the amount of time that takes to bounce what's the height of the pig the noise the intensity so you can make an, a brutal assessment right the speed of impact the highest um hate also the energy so the relationship with noise what's the amount of the inclination the sound power so once again you can make possible that a student that wants to know uh, the minimum thing till the student that wants to know almost everything how to define the amount of noise re depending on the height of the ball okay I was too fast, I'm aware. But if you want, we can make some experiment after that. If you want an experiment, we can do it and we can test. Okay. And here, if you want, you can see all the uh, technologies that we used before. Yesterday, uh, we finished, and you can find uploaded all these uh, training sessions because we ended yesterday this uh, teacher training, and you can find it everything there. That's all from my side. Thank you. Thank you. That's all. Thank you. I think the, now it's my turn. <laughs> now I have, have to give the floor to Guillem. I must tell you something, Luis. I'm a raving fan of your work. I cannot see Guillem connected. Are you here? Yes, I'm here. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. I cannot see you. Now I see you. I can see Luis Carlos, but I cannot see you. Well, at least you can listen to me. Okay, go ahead, Guillem. Brilliant. Perfect. I'm going to share my screen. Sorry. Bear with me just a second. Cool. Good afternoon, everybody. It is an amazing opportunity to me to be with you. I'm deeply motivated after listening to Luis' presentation. I'm going to talk about sensors and data. This project, it's a very technical project, though I'll try to think about the change that we can create for citizenship when dealing with the data. Therefore, I'm not going to talk a lot about the science, but maybe a little bit more about society. Let me talk about what we do at the Fab Lab in Barcelona, which is a center, a research center that you can find in the neighborhood of Popleno. We have 12,000 different Fab Labs. We love to share our experiments and creations. From our headquarters, we have um, center that works with a citizen data why are we are here why am i sharing with you all these ideas well in 2010 2012 when you turn on the tv or when you read the newspapers they talked about smart cities we still talk a lot about this idea of smart cities. And we were listening to this concept of smart cities and we wonder, what is that? Smart cities? What is that? Well, we like to put names to things. We like to give names to things, to explain what are things, right? 
And suddenly, when we look for the smart city concepts, we found pictures like that. Rio de Janeiro was awarded with the best smart city uh, award. And then we wonder, what is the role of the citizen? The role of the citizen is the passive citizen. We talk about the power of technology in our daily life, but we don't talk about how can we contribute towards change from a critical perspective and in a positive and manner, right? So how can we as citizens to transform these smart cities? And now I'd like to talk about this idea of the name of the project that we gave, which is the smart citizen. What are we doing, right? And we are using this concept in several schools in our country. What can we do as a fab lab? What's the role of a citizen? Suddenly, we made a joke, right? And we start talking about smart citizen. Instead of smart cities, smart citizen. We develop very cheap sensors and st citizens they could put in a balcony, in a garden to measure the pollution of the air, the noise pollution, why we have more noise today and less tomorrow, why we have cars at 2 a.m., why is someone screaming under your window uh, in the middle of the night, what's the level of pollution, uh, and finally, we developed something that it was not anymore an invention. It was something much more robust that you could put together in your house at home and to share all the data that you collected from your balcony or garden, whatever. So this is what we made possible to us. It was important to create a community towards this. So in 2012, 2013, we began to include these sensors, data uh, platforms, and citizen participation. Other people all over the planet start selling this invention that we uh, produced. And we wanted to see uh, that smart cities should be built differently because citizens, they were already used to digital technologies. And we could create this movement to put together urban planning data and many other fields. Here you have different examples where you can use this kind of devices. In 2015, we realized that what happened was that many people bought and acquired this device maybe they had it by chance because maybe a city council offered this device or it belonged to a project in school or in a neighborhood or whatever maybe they bought it suddenly we realized that after using the device well they did two main things and something was not working and I think it's very important to talk about failures more than successes for you to understand why sometimes we fail when we talk about science and technology. We realized that people didn't have enough scientific level to use this device. People, they are scared of data. When we talk about science, not everybody knows what uh, micrograms per square meter and the amount of par uh, particles and also uh, lack of a purpose, right? Why do I have to take measures and about the pollution of air in my city? And also a lack of social interaction. Sometimes people, they do not know how to share. Maybe people, they do not know that a neighbor has a problem and as someone that knows technology, uh, they could work together with the neighbor. Suddenly we began a project, it made sense. Sensors are anything at all if sensors do not empower citizens. We said, first we measure awareness, third action. So not just to measure for the sake of measuring, we measure to create changes, to improve our environment. So we test all these ideas in Barcelona, in, in this square in Barcelona, Plaza del Sol, because it's a very noisy square. It's still very noisy today, but I think that problems are still ongoing. And 
we also work in a very important manner, in a very creative manner. When you have a specific project with our sensors and our adventures, and you have neighbors complaining about noise in the square, it is very important for you not to solve the problem you have to give support to communities for communities to solve the issues of the community right so we as the technical people we need to be together with neighbors and citizens and to create communities and finally we develop several tools a technology tools to improve sensors to have a new onboarding easy to install we also, and we talk a lot about it in the previous presentation, data literacy. Many people, they are not the physicists. Maybe they don't remember the secondary school mathematics. They are scared when they see these kind of graphs, right? How to use new tools, right? We make people to send us post postcards for them to be creative without any kind of a text and to use the how, uh, uh, Christmas holidays were for them, right? With graphs. So we analyze and we assess different data and we can see some graphs and we can uh, print and we can draw on top of the graphs. We can compare graphs to study the differences between the noise in one street and the other. So how to compare both streets. So we don't have to be afraid and no fear at all. And also co-creation. At the end of the day, we must make people to work together for the sake of change and to vindicate some rights. So exercises like the one you have here, the future newspaper, right? So they can tell about what was been great, what was good, what was bad during the project. They can publish the information in this newspaper and also reflection and questionnaires you that you work in the education field you know that it's very important to have service and also the digital presence how can we gather the data data in an excel graph and an excel sheet how to communicate in the social media in this website we told uh, what happened in the previous square with all the noise data and also social interactions right students and neighbors that love technology but if they have a problem uh, okay they can work together right and they will find a solution so we can have meeting points and this is something that we created uh, in the, the same square that i showed you before because we wanted to find a common place for neighbors and they will be able to be together and to talk about this dialogue and to create this uh, community so how to use technology how to work with makers communities uh, in order uh, to have uh, tools that will uh, reinforce these social exchanges so the example at the uh, square what happened well people they put some sensors they were not scared about the data maybe the most important thing was that we were able to create these little assemblies and this technology project had a very social aspect and also a political aspect too right in this same square with neighbors the city council people that had restaurants and bars and we suddenly uh, proposed to build like a space a space for children and so what i want to share with you let me tell you that we work together it is quite a practical perspective it's an open way we face the citizen problems and first of all right we define the problem we create a community around the problem we use technology to measure things we understand what we are measure we create some actions uh, through what we measure therefore we create this change we create proposals we stop complaining, we make things, we rethink for the future generations to improve the environment. We have a book, you can download it, it's in a, a citizen sensitive toolkit, this is the title of the book. And to conclude, let me tell you that some initiatives that were made through this 
smart citizen projects and thanks to the experience at the fab lab in barcelona we work with the different local authorities local stakeholders we work uh, in this school in badalona and we also we work with the do it project aiming at measuring understanding and being proactive to solve some schools problems and also with this uh, atencio project we work together with 15 schools in barcelona and we use this uh, similar methodology inside this framework where we were, were we were able to measure the air quality and to know if this had an impact on students results and also uh, with the sensors as i met, showed before how they will be able to produce very similar experiments, right? Because we wanted them to be scientists, right? And uh, we wanted them to write a final scientific paper. It's an amazing project. I'm gonna talk about it later if you want. And also we have climate uh, shelters with 80 sensors in 10 Barcelona schools. Uh, I know that students are not working directly with this project but many scientists are working with the students also the muv uh, projects with different uh, sensors in 12 barcelona schools through different materials and uh, finally we have the biblio lab we have uh, this project in the library in uh, in a library in barcelona next to sagrada familia and in all these projects but many of them they have uh pedagogical materials together uh we developed these materials with uh, several experts and a, it's an open source project you can use it you can go to this website and they are available at the resource centers of barcelona so you can ask the permission to update and to use it uh, it's quite an old version but we are trying to update it right this website that I'm going to share with you brings you to our papers and you will find all the different educational projects. It's quite a tiny part, but you will find all the education content, the curriculum uh, for you to reproduce and to scale it. The, and let me tell you as a conclusion that we, not only work in the education environment, we work in other fields. We offer support to scientists, and here you can see other devices that we produce that we developed in an open manner for uh, you to see what's our work. And this is what we are, such as school shelters, uh, sensors for the measurement of the air at home, also sensors to measure the uh, sea water quality together with this sailing school. So this is almost everything. It's a very long project. So we've been working for more than 10 years, many topics, many ideas. I think that I offer you some ideas and maybe through the Q&A session, we will see uh, what we understand, what you, you get, and if you have doubts, I'll be there because uh, it's important uh, for you to know uh, what we do. I hope that you had fun and I wait for the Q&A session. Thank you. Gosh, Guillem, I feel overloaded with data. So maybe in the end, we will have time to ask you something. I don't know if Diana is amongst us. I want to know what's museology. I have no idea. Well, what is museology? Museology studies museums and how to <laughs> organize a museum. This is museology. Tell us something else about these ideas. Okay, I'm trying to share with you my screen. Just a second, please.
Uh, is it cool? Okay, can you see? I don't listen. No I don't hear you. Yeah, we can, we can hear you. We can hear you. I'm not talking about mythology here, but it will be my pleasure to talk about it later on if you want. I want to talk about uh, citizen science and a program that we have at the Office of Science in Barcelona. Beyond working with schools, as like Guillem mentioned before, we also work with elderly people, adults, young people. Well, at the end of the day, what do we want? Well, today we must talk about schools because we are in an education seminar. Anyway, let me talk about our role and what do we do in this uh, citizen science uh, office. We began in 2012. It's quite a young institution. What do we do? We offer our uh, tools, supports, we uh, promote science in Barcelona and all the urban areas of Barcelona. We try to offer different uh, viewpoints. We are contributing in different projects that began before 2012. We want the new projects to be developed in uh, specific areas and neighborhoods. So it would be like maybe a city center, right? We talked a lot with uh, Visionova, with other research teams, but we also like to say that we are able to create new projects relying on the demand that exists. Demand not only from a perspective of a very specific department, but also what citizens are asking, right? What they want. So at the end of the day, building together knowledge, right? This is what we want. It is to contribute. It is to offer new uh, perspective. It is to create new uh, knowledge and know-how. And uh, what do we do? Okay, we have several fields of action. We have several tools. We have several levels that allow us to work. We belong to the City Council of Barcelona, and this offers the possibility to feel comfortable when working with different institutions that belong to the public administration and that are related with Barcelona City Council. We work with local agents. They are the main support for us to deploy our programs, but also to capture where the needs and the expectations that a citizens will have. Because at the end of the day, what advantage that we have as a public administration, sometimes it's a trouble, right? But it's clear enough. Because at the end of the day, we want to have, we want to be the entry point for citizens to the public administrations. We citizens, we are everywhere, uh, but we need to create this point of entry. This, we've been working from the Culture Institute of Barcelona, scientific culture mainly, we were lucky enough to work hand in hand with different cultural centers, uh, um, civic centers, libraries that are easy for them to be together with the citizens. And so these centers are like entry points for us to get more involved. Beyond that, we have other uh, systems, other programs, other activities to raise the interest of the communities, for communities to awake in front of uh, the uh, science. And we want to be together with the citizens. We have a program that is in called science at neighborhoods we work mainly in neighborhood libraries and also uh, citizen science in schools right so we divide our activity relying on the different neighborhoods of the city we also have a website if you want to have more information you can okay you can read it despite we have very few articles but you can find more information let me talk about uh, 
citizen science in schools, which is really interesting to me. It is a program that uh, it says that we began in 2018 officially, but we previously work with this program with different proposals for different schools and educational centers. We began uh, little by little, slowly, but surely. We developed different pilot projects. We tried to better define the meaning of being together with a research team, the education community, teachers, and uh, communities, neighbors. So we, as an office, what do we want? We want to raise awareness, as Luis Carlo and, and Guillem mentioned before. We want to raise awareness. What is really important. We want to have a critical mindset. This is very important. But this kind of mindset, it's not possible if you don't go deeper, if you are not able to read and to know uh, more about things, right? Today's social media are so powerful, but they are very shallow. And sometimes it's not enough. You need to go beyond media. You need to know how to go deeper and to know things the way they are in reality. This is what we are trying to improve, to create awareness, not only in teachers' community, but also in citizens' communities, because at the end of the day, we are all citizens. And teachers working in schools, they are also citizens, and they are the prescribers, so to speak, because they are the ones that will have a bigger impact when perceiving, when understanding, when transforming the society at schools. And because at the end of the day, there's a common research. This shared research creates new strategies that will make us to have a stronger citizenship. And this is a program. I would like to offer you more details by the end. We work together with the Association of Education Centers in Barcelona. This association, it is kind of a consortium that uh, has the regional government support and the municipality support. So education, when developed in the city, is developed by the city council, but it comes with the support of the regional government. And two years, three years ago, this consortium, this institution they create a unified appeal for a unified strategy for education so it's like an entry point and it's like a contact point it's like a focal point for all the uh, teachers community to be there right and we are working with this consortium because we are unifying all the curriculum and this is what we do we offer year after year where are the research groups and teams that are uh, available to and are ready to work and usually the majority of uh, projects that uh, we develop they work for the secondary schools but also they work for the large years of the primary schools and also the professional schools this year we had uh, one uh, group of students that belong to uh, professional schools and we also want to develop many things beyond a quarter of a year right so we want to have a longer process so we can go beyond a quarter of a year well this year 2020 2021 we count with the different research projects you can see it here we have the sea observators which is a very important platform uh, that is a collaborative platform before that uh, scientific science appeared and it became a fashionable concept they were working before the, and they also work with this association called the microplastic watchers they try to uh, assess the amount of microplastics in the sea. We also work with a very interesting project that it's called Plantas. It is a project that was developed together with the Institute of uh, Science of the Sea, together with the University of Barcelona. It is the uh, information uh, center for 
biological reproduction. So they assess the amount of pollen that appears during spring. We also work with Other Collect. Other Collect has been a program that uh, was developed by an uh, agency, by a company, innovation company, that it's a very, very specialized in citizen science. This uh, company names is Science for Change, and they work about smells, the smells as uh, atmosphere uh, pollution indicators. We also work with uh, Ritma Natura, which is a very important project we make the follow-up of the nature nature behavior what happens what's flowering what's increasing what's growing so we take some evidences to uh, better manage the environment and also we have reunet reunet it's a very important project it was uh, created many years ago we work up with the river vessels and we also have a mapa sonor which is a sound map it's quite a new project it was a project that we developed together with the support of citizens if we have time i'll talk about it later and it's uh, uh, related with, with uh, guillem's ideas but it's not exclusively centered in sound pollution but also it tries to define what researchers mentioned to create a sound heritage of a landscape, right? Because sound is as important as visual uh, things. So we want to create these different spaces and different maps relying on the amount of sounds and noises. We also have Flood Up. Flood Up, it is a project developed by the University of Barcelona that works uh, for detecting and preventing natural risks and emergencies, usually in floods and rivers. So they are the ones that uh, assess and monitor the, and also mosquito alert, I guess that you know what deals with. I think that this is quite an important project and it had a very interesting impact in press and the news it's a very powerful project it's a recent one much more recent than rio mar and uh, rio net right so it was quite successful and we can find it all over spain so and mosquito alert has had quite a big level of success so each and every project works with through classrooms two, three classrooms, and what they do? Okay, they uh, start teaching uh, teachers, right? Before we had, uh, we did it in person, but now we do it virtually. Welcome to virtual reality. And uh, well, we begin with uh, telling teachers what they would do with all the different programs and we wanted to know what are the previous expectations right it's kind of an assessment that we do what's the starting point of teachers and we ask teachers to make the same assessment with the students and we also let them know what's the purpose of each and every project why it's a broad assessment because we have such an amount of diversity when dealing with the projects so they go to school because then finally this year we were able to make these trainings in person despite the difficulties but at the end of the day they can tell us what's the best methodology for projects to have success but always always respecting their own features we were able to detect different patterns right we have the different in-person sessions depending on the school needs usually we offer six eight sessions and we talked about the uh, challenges and the research topic how we can make data gathering they do it and finally they assess the, the results it is very interesting what we mentioned before about co-creation they are projects that they have a quite a clear idea in mind 
And the majority of projects that I share with you are projects that go beyond this, beyond what they do in a school. The reunite and uh, observadores de mar and mosquito alert, they need very long series of data gathering for them to create, right, this uh, long-term perspective. It's not a just a single educational activity. It's a long-term activity. So centers, schools, they create data that we put in the whole series of projects. So we don't make data not to evolve. We complete data on a long-term basis. And research and researchers, they are always available to offer support to all teachers and students. And finally, we hope since we create this, recreated this first stage of information, we want to have a clear idea about the research goal adapted to the reality of the school. Schools have to be independent. They will be able to work with the different classrooms. And finally, they will make a common proposal. We also have this previous assessment, but also we have an after assessment. Something that it is very important is that when they finish the program, they must let us know the data. They need to know how to share data. And from the experiment with results, they uh, must be able to boost some actions, not only in the most direct environment, which is usually the uh, teacher community, but also what they can do in the field and in their respective areas, neighbors. So if we have a project in a specific neighborhood, right, next to the uh, River Besos neighborhood, so the teacher and the students will be together and students, they will share the information, but students, they will uh, share the information in the public library. So we are boosting this uh, common knowledge. Students, they are the asset. Uh, they are an asset, they belong, uh, they become an asset, right? Because they are active, they share things the, with all the members of the community. So it is a research program, but it's also an action program. So while you are assessing as a student, you, you are researching, but you need to offer an action. So the assessment, experimenting, data gathering, conclusions, and finally the proposal, the call to action. This is something that we need for all the projects that belong to our project and program. Okay, in order to complete, uh, I don't know if those listening to us, they had a, uh, an experience with the service learning system, the APS in Spanish. Uh, they look for uh, new problems to boost action and to promote uh, actions in all the communities. We have this uh, APS system together with the Promoter Center for uh, Science Services, which is a, an independent center. You can find all the information. It is a guide that do not offer the recipes, but it let us know the different cases. We said different uh, projects of different APS, how to give blood, also a program in the Empurda, also Mosquito Alert, Microplastic Watchers, BPAD, Reunet Jokes for Social Change, which is a very interesting uh, project. Um, Diana. Diana, we really apologize. Um, yes, tell us. Tell sí, me. Mira, just la que venía well, sí. Yeah, this is the <laughs> question. Perfecte, perfecte. Explícans, okay, cool. a mi, sí. Tell us. I want you que to ya curs de Lo, sí. Please try to speed up. So, this is just a beautiful image, right? All data that we gathered through all the projects that we've been involved with. So, in the end of the day, we, we want, at the end of the day, we want to uh, data gathering, we want to make people to get in, in 
engage to work to be there to work with different communities to work with schools and that's all that's the main purpose thank you fantastic fantastic Doncs ara, ara okay. crec que cool. els, els participants no, tenen l'opció de, de, de fer preguntes, si no, they have pregunto jo, the opportunity to pregunto jo primer. Ask questions. El que no he dit és perquè I'll jo estic moderant aquesta sessió i no ho està fent la vostra veïna. I didn't tell you why I'm moderating this jo, session. A mi m'han escollit per well, moderar aquesta sessió perquè jo professionalment, com podeu veure, treballo en un laboratori i me dedico a fer experiments normals de recerca biomèdica, normals o no, o sigui, em dedico al microbioma, o sigui, estudiar una mica els fongs i les bacteries i els bacteriofags que viuen entre els altres i com interaccionen entre ells, and how they però interact en el meu temps lliure, i ja des de fa molts anys, vaig fundar amb uns amics un laboratori obert, un laboratori dels biohackers, i inventem a tothom qui té un projecte personal. And we invite everybody that has a personal project that will need a lab for making things possible, you can come to our center and we'll help you for you to develop the project. Well, we can help you from scratch, we can offer you some help to design your lab and to write scientific articles. That's why I'm working in citizen uh, science. This is a home take message for you. Citizen science is different from conventional science. Why? Because we deal with very real problems close to people, aiming at finding a solution, not only data collection, but also always, 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 we work with projects that have open data. Always. This is vital, very important, because many, many times, the kind of science we are working with no is a closed science, tothom. only for I, scientific bueno, papers, vaig, never shared with the rest of citizens. Okay. This is my purpose. Now that I know more teachers, I realize that this is the best way to promote I scientific thinking and a critical tot, thinking no about um, everything you want, not all the things that have to do with the no science. Si... Okay? So, I don't know if someone from our dear audience has a question or I can break the ice. Who there? Maybe Luis Carlos can make an experiment with us. Una cosa que, que, que jo he viscut des del biohacking, no? Pues altres like veniu més des del tema de, de l'educació. Eh, dieu sempre estudiants i estudiantes. You always talk about eh, dieu estudiants, de fet. Llavors, a mi m'agradaria que reflexioneu una mica si aquest approach més de participatiu like en la ciència, si realment no teu algun tipus de biais entre nois i noies, o si la gent que és de lletres o que se considera i de lletres no vol participar, o com recollo tota aquesta gent, o com portaríeu això fora d'una classe que no sigui nens i nenes i fos, jo que sé, la Ramoneta la Jubilada. Com ho enfocaríeu vosaltres o com ho veieu? What would be the approach, the gender approach? I don't know, but maybe what we did in all the series of activities that we are developing in the Olympic Stadium and the Forum Park, we have two activities that we propose. We make a contemporary dance the studio. There is a researcher that is a physicist that talks about Newton's laws and uses the sensors of uh, cell phones and students, they make some uh, choreographies relying on Newton's laws. So we try to put together these different worlds. So we sometimes say dance for, bo dance for girls, science for boys. We need to break these barriers and these niches, whether you dance it or not, right? Well, what happens is that the directors of the project are girls. This is not good. Okay, we need to break these patterns. No sé si, sure. si voleu afegir... I don't know if you want to add on something. As we're talk talking about the gender, I do have experience with other Fab Lab uh, projects, but when we deal with sensors and uh, educational projects, I'm not used to work with that, all right? We suffer quite a lot because uh, there is kind of a fragmentation. There is like a gap, a gender gap. 
the way we understand uh, knowledge in schools everything it's much more cross-linked right when someone asks you what's your job okay if you say that you are unemployed it's like that you are an outsider so we have a very traditional mindset right so your job is the most important thing of your life so if you're a boy you're a girl you will have to get one job or the other when we use technology to solve these kind of issues sometimes we put technology on the first place and sometimes we never share how right how we talk about problems and issues and this is something that we suffer on a constant basis and uh, many individuals with uh, skills much more related with uh, thinking about conflicts and how to problem solving and much more related with social things and they get out of the scientific world and they never feel motivated right with the science when compared with other students that are more techy. so the question is this gap right are we going to talk about science are we going to talk about arts now we are going to solve a problem that we have in our high school let's find the problems that we have we we'll love for some tools for you to change and to solve the problem we don't care if we do it from a science perspective or arts perspective we want to solve the problem you know what happens in our specific coi in our specific case we don't see any difference at all the gender gap i think that students boys students girls male and female students they are always curious they are curious or whether are curious whether they are not okay this is what guillem says at the end of the day you put them in a specific group depending if they feel attracted or not to technology so in an unaware manner we say now we are going to draw uh, some cell phones now we are going to use the sensors the cost route we don't know we need to keep on analyzing assessing at the end of the day the same we can see in the adults cases what we think that must be changed what they think that needs to be changed sometimes we don't think that uh, we have to change anything at all right so we'll see what happens whether we talk about sensors or maybe in the river and to uh, swim in the river they sometimes they have to do they have or maybe you have to mix the sand and to make like a 50 50 square maybe they will upload it or not so this is a motivation we need curious people right we have curious people and we don't care about the gender. Everything that you are sharing with us, it's quite a successful case because it's always difficult to have mixed genders, age, different, different ages. When we gather data in a lab, it's very boring when I see citizens gathering data, I feel, wow, right? how is it possible? I, I think that I understand it right now, the strategies that you use for citizens to feel attractive to science. I believe that data make visible what was invisible. Data gathering is boring for many people, but I know how you manage what makes citizens to be completely engaged. And this idea of co-creation, I don't know where is your magic. What makes a citizen to wish to gather data and to have fun gathering data, collecting data? This is what we mentioned before at the end of the day. What is the first motivation? If you are uh, talking about something that represents the individual and it is a challenge, uh, let's say in the case of the square with the noise, it was not an easy thing, right? When you work with the noise uh, pollution and uh, when you are worried about the pollution in the river and the beaches are dirty and polluted, so the entry point it's different but you know what 
it's it's boring right to collect data but what See. happens if you want to know what's the final result okay you can do it you need to collect data and to know if the flower is in stage one or two to classify the flower that is blooming for you to know what is happening with the quantity of water so at the end of the day you are able to create something that's the purpose but let's not be naive the students that are bored okay they will be always boring you have the motivated people you have the students that don't care a lot okay they don't care so it's like in uh, real life well if you allow me let me tell you that things are not easy easy at all we witnessed in our own experience we sent one uh, 1500 sensors all over the planet it was difficult for people to carry on working and collecting data with the sensors but at the end of the day in our specific case it's obvious we must work a problem that needs a solution and once you detect the problem people they get involved they want to solve the problem and things change needless to say we have different levels of motivation and uh, suddenly citizens they only collect data sometimes in the context of this square uh, noisy square uh, we have the neighbor that loves to collect data but we have other neighbors that make very important tasks such as creating the website where we'll share the data and they are the ones that will make a call for the weekly meeting and also to fill the different graphs to work with data so all the roles that we play as a society are very important right? so when you talked about co-creation is this co-creation for those people that we don't know what's co-creation well co-creation is to have a common and shared positions and strategies when we talk about the sensors we work with them we put the sensors for some days right and then we leave the sensors there and we go okay maybe someone more technical than myself in my team that knows more about physics than i do he will be able or she will be able to communicate about what happened we can also select what's the neighbor that will put the sensor so these are all activities that make us to be co-creators at the end of the day people will understand data so this environmental uh, work these activities that we do at the end of the day uh, this is to me co-creation in our specific case i feel kind of weird right because we do not create uh, this kind of citizen science what do we do? Okay, we have a physics and mathematics, many people, uh, they don't like uh, trigonometry, Newton's laws, okay. But if you suddenly go to an amusement park, okay, the environment is totally different. So someone will be in an amusement park and won't, won't make anything. But something that we uh, observed it is that we created an ecosystem. And if you want to see, let's say, this uh, attraction, no, it's 25, no, it's 30 degrees. The weirdo is the one that it's not collaborating, right? And I insist on the previous idea. We create an ecosystem where the individual that it's not measuring, it is the one, right? you don't have to tell it or they, they, they do it oh i'm i'm bored okay now i'm going to make some trigonometry so if you have a group of people screaming and shouting discussing debating so at the end of the day this is amazing to me right so you can see the different lines and so on uh two color better calculated degrees i can see a trick, a trick that you, i really loved so the obstacles i imagine that it is important 
For the rest of projects, if you put a difficult task, sometimes when they come to the biohacking space, what I do? Okay, I can only raise you to reach this first step, because maybe this is the knowledge that you don't have. And Yo then they can go up, 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 they can climb. I love uh, microplastics. Uh, for many, many years, I'd like to have to some samples and to work with that. Because they are very interesting. How, can, how can you raise the level of difficulties? I don't know if you can talk about this topic. It was an important thing to me for everybody to get involved and to participate. I don't know. Maybe you can offer more information. Well, as you're talking about microplastics, right? I think that there is something that is vital and very important. As Guillaume said before, we are appealing to a challenge, right? That has an impact on you, something that is a problem, something that's a need, something that you need to solve. And on the other side, that we can see that there is a very important topic, how to create this awareness, how to raise awareness in this microplastic context. We add different data, we put it all in the general platform. You can contribute from the Barcelona beach with this 50 and 50 squared made in the sand. This year you can, this day you can find this or that and you upload all the data. So this is a um, knowledge pool that has been built together with all the students as it happens with the Rio Med and many other projects. This on the one hand. And on the other hand, I guess that it is also very interesting this, as I mentioned before, to make a part, to be part of this solution, if it's possible, this is really empowering empowering all the participants. Yes, that's empowerment. That's why we always have this open data, right? Because we want to share. This belongs to the main goal to share. And this makes us to be different when compared with the conventional science. I said this many times, but I want this idea to be clear, right? This is what we want, to be a different science. Okay, we have the last question that has to do much more with lockdown. Do you think that this pandemic and being exposed to scientific data and this real-time science, yes, no, now, yes, okay, some information, right? Right? I have a question, I must um, experience si something, I give an answer and that's all. Do you think that que, citizens que are un... more engaged no now? They want to participate no right si now or not? I don't know if you have uh, your personal insight, you that are in the front row of research. Okay, this is something that we talked about, about the scientific method and how science progresses. Sometimes the problem has to do with fake news, right? In science, fake data, it's something very common. Science progresses because the previous generation failed and had some fake knowledge, right? So you can progress, you can better measure, right? And this is what happened. So pseudoscience, as it's not something that you can measure, you can say whatever you want. So you can say whatever, because maybe someone can tell you you were paid by the pharma industry. So at the end of the day, it was a knife with a double shade. So science is not dogmatic trial and error. And some people, and this is something that I listen many times, some people said they don't know anything. Though other people, they believe fake news, these pseudoscience, 
they believe this pseudoscience with the fake news. But okay. there are other people that offer their support to the real <laughs> scientists. I don't know who won the battle. What is true is that the, you with the projects, you are creating a generation of students and citizens that have got a much more elaborated critical thinking. They, uh, they feel much more comfortable comfortable with the reality of things and maybe they are willing to better participate or maybe they suffered some level of fatigue. It's not their job to opt for one thing or the other. We are we are all tired. We are all suffered this fatigue. It's very difficult to know what kind of fatigue they suffered during the pandemic and the lockdown. The general perception, it is that people are tired absolutely exhausted and i don't know if what we suffered in the past will make uh, people to be much more aware about the role that science played i don't know if i express myself so i think i don't want to tell you that we need much more pandemics for sure we don't need more pandemics but this clash, this constant clash between truth, fake news, science, dogmatic science, right, or not. So we are progressing and we need to offer some room for science to keep on going and evolving and also to make mistakes. That's natural. And also to collect data. It's boring, but important. That's essential. Yes. Yes, in this specific case, let me underscore a very important idea that you mentioned. I think that there is a lack of knowledge of this scientific method, and I think that the pandemic did not help. And it's not the role of educators to make people aware about the role of science. Society, in general terms, right, do not believe in science. and. So science, it's a tool and this critical thinking and to believe that science belongs to the system and uh, media uh, offers some scientific data as to only truth uh, and people, they do not trust the science, right? So this makes things very difficult when we try to show very complex cases such as COVID-19 pandemic, okay? So people, they get lost. So, however, after COVID, we had this lockdown. Thanks to lockdown, we made some experiments to know how do we live in cities. Thanks to that, we had a higher uh, level of demand to know what we had. We had sensors, yes, to me. Okay, there was no noise when we were during lockdown and the improvement of air was something real because there were no cars in the city. So viruses are difficult to see, but the noise level reduction, the uh, pollution level reduction made people to be more interested in uh, science and this boost this new uh, citizen awareness. Yes, data make visible the invisible. Thus, citizens, they can participate. It's boring, but it's the main pillar to any kind of experiment. You need to gather data, enough data. As uh, Carlos mentioned, statistics are important. We still have seven minutes, and I'd like to take advantage of these seven minutes. If I'd like to start with a project such as gathering some samples uh, to know what's the microbioma because it's a very invisible thing. It's very difficult to assess what would be your uh, recommendation. What I have to do or sure and to have some success because data are very difficult to see this. Uh, data are very difficult to see. First of all, I create a community. That's the basics. We had some experiences with the scientific science uh, working with microbioma. It was a European project that was called Saca la Lengua. Yes, yes. Downstairs, I know. It was a very beautiful project. 
So you can be in the underground. No, no, and I, you can I, get some data. I did it. I did it. I have all the data in my freezer. So we wanted to create this community. So the feeling that we create community, that we belong to a community, that we see ourselves related with the projects that you make. And this spread out and this has a bigger impact. I don't know how you are working, Nuria, but if you work with elderly people uh, centers, with caregivers, right? So I think that at the end of the day, I don't know the experience of my colleagues uh, working at Citizens, but I think that the fundamental part, it is to create this community for you to identify what are the main stakeholders, right? that you will have to work with and you made them to get on board oh, bueno, no that's a good starting el, el point let me say that the product is working now y yeah. la de it's a, y la del SPUN, and the data de collecting de the data gathering no and assessment we got data from all over the city not just uh, through a co-creation process it was a scientific project it was a regular scientific project very normal project we took some data and now we are finishing this project data I know it like to write and to have this possibility, right, to make this project uh, for the citizens. That's why I'm asking you. So that's why I'm asking you, because now we have this uh, minutes, four minutes. Maybe what I can tell you is that microbioma shows things that cannot be seen. It's very difficult, right? I think that things have been improved a little bit, but suddenly when we can see by bacteria, so they are like a ferment, very similar to humans with hands, arms, limbs, and uh, cooking has to do with the uh, fermentation, bread, cheese, yogurt, all has ferments in it. So make people to understand and to see and to exist not only belongs to, to something that we discovered a few years ago. No, it's something very old and the evolution of humankind. So to put names to all the uh, living things that are uh, surrounding ourselves, but we never gave them a name, uh, maybe, why don't know? Uh, why not to write a tale with these living creatures? So we need these kind of steps for making people that microorganisms, they are like animals such as cats, hens, dogs. And in the end, we will be able to create some anecdotes and to know that in our city, we have this kind of species, uh, like we have some birds and doves and trees in the main squares of the city. Well, I think that you could do it in the Tipi Davo amusement park, right? So you should make things attractive and appealing. This is my uh, tip for you. We uh, need the people to understand what are microbiomas. Yes. Yes. Yes, from you, all the students. And the last concept I, I, I wrote down, I need to know <laughs> what's a microbiome. It's quite a new word, yes. I'd like to share my notes with you. Anyone that would like to start with this project, okay, the first thing, it is to create a community and to tell in a clear manner what's the problem, and also in a closer manner. People need to feel that they belong, right, to this solution. Despite this, Carlos didn't tell it, we must make people to have fun, and students, they must also participate. Because young people, they have this energy, and adults, they must be engaged too, okay? We ran out of time. 
Y bueno, donales gracias a Tom, no només per participar en el evento hoy, sino por participar en general en todo el evento que está haciendo, nosotros somos los últimos. Y bueno, creo que como ves tan con yo, pues habéis visto tanto que con yo, para que no nos hayan podido ver en persona y encarar online, pues para disfrutarlo al máximo, no sé si la organización volvía a alguna cosa más, pero si hay algo antes, es importante que yo, pero ya debo a todo el mundo, es importante que yo, pero ya debo a todo el mundo, es más importante que yo, pero si hay algo antes, pero si no, lo hemos hecho en el mismo. I close the session here. Let's have dinner. Okay, fantastic. Enjoy your meal. Enjoy your dinner. Good night. Good evening. Thank you very much for your kind participation. Thank you so much. Bye.